sunny skies here at Trinity University for today's game between the Rhodes College Lynx and the Trinity University Tigers. Hello and welcome. I'm Cole Isaacson, joined alongside Luke Terry. It was an impressive scoreline for the Tigers last week. They get the win, 38-3 to over Birmingham Southern. But it wasn't the start they wanted, and but they were able to pull away in the second quarter. Yeah, 38 to three, and interesting to hear Coach Urban talk about it not being the start that they wanted, but he talked about over the past couple of years how we've seen this team finish games really strong. You think about both playoff games last year, Harden-Simmons, a great second half where they scored all of their points to come back and win it. And the same thing against University of Mary Harden-Baylor where they came out really strong in the second half. But this year, Coach Urban's really put an emphasis on wanting this team to come out, start offensively really, really strong. And you see those Tigers coming through the tunnel right now. The captain's running ahead of the rest of the pack right there crossing the field. Tucker Horn, Ryan Merrifield, Caleb Harmel, and Trey King as they're getting ready for the coin toss at midfield. And Obviously, quarterback Tucker Horn going to do his best to lead this offense to get them off to that quick start that Coach Urban wants to see. The Tigers take the field, and this crowd loves to see them, as you see from that excellent drone shot that we have today. But let's talk about Rhodes for a second. It's been a good start to the season for them. They're 2-1 and one as they come into this game, but they're playing a team that they lost to 45 to nothing at home last season. When we asked Coach Duncan if there was anything that they could take from that game and bring into this one, he said, yeah, let's do the opposite of what we did last time. How can they do that today? Well, Coach Duncan also said that last year's result didn't really reflect their ability the way that he knows this team and he believes in this team. And I think that's the first thing. He says they ultimately just need to come out and compete a little bit better than they did last year. I think this is a great team that's improved year over year under his time. Coach Duncan entering his third season after leaving ship at Barry College, also an SAA member, 3-7 and seven in his first year at Rhodes, 5-5 five and five last year. As you mentioned, a good start, 2-0 and oh before falling last week against center in triple overtime. So they're making strides. I think this week what you want to see is – Really just the simple aspects of the game that you harp on week in and week out. They need to take care of the ball. They need to not turn it over. They need to flip the field if they're not going to go down and score points. But on top of that, you have to be cognizant of the fact that you have young players on the offensive side of the ball, namely Evan Reeder, who's making his first collegiate start at quarterback this afternoon. He was really, really good coming into the game in the second half last week against center but you need to keep him upright. You need to make things simple for him early on. Make sure that he doesn't get too shaken up and rattled by this really, really good Trinity defense and defensive front. If you're the Lynx, you have to establish the running game. Get the ball out of his hands quickly. Get the offense into a little bit of a rhythm. Make this defense play a little bit more reserved. Don't allow them to get after a young quarterback in the first and second quarter so he can open up and maybe take some shots to get this team really rolling on the road. This Tigers defense getting introduced right now, but it's the Rogues defense that comes in 12th ranked in the entire country. What do they need to do today to stop a Tiger offense that's been humming of late? I think the one thing that we haven't seen a ton of this year, Cole, is opposing defenses really getting after Tucker Horn. I've talked about it a little bit on the broadcast, but year over year, the way that his game has changed and evolved has really dictated how successful the offense has been. In 2021, he would drop back, get the ball out in rhythm pretty much every time. He didn't make a whole lot of errors. That changed last year. A little bit more pressure on him, got flushed from the pocket. Three interceptions two seasons ago versus nine last year. If you're this Lynx defense, you got to really get after him. And it's a group that's improved the last couple of years, as has this team as a whole. In 2021, they gave up 332 points. Last year, they more than cut that in half. So they're trending in the right direction on the defensive side of the ball as well. I think if you can get a little bit of pressure on Tucker Horn early on, don't allow him to get the ball out in rhythm, especially on the key third downs where the Tigers have been really, really good to start the season. Trinity, the seventh best team in the country on third down. 
They'll look to continue that, and it looks like the Tigers will kick off to start things as Tyler Huddle in the kickoff unit get out there for Trinity. 99 degrees here in San Antonio. It feels like 107. We can only imagine that it feels even hotter on the turf field. Yeah, and kind of interesting circumstances here in San Antonio. The game time ultimately being moved up, originally slotted to start at 6 o'clock, but really out here in the heat of the day due to some unfortunate travel circumstances for roads. But in our conversation with Coach Duncan, he said that he loves this. The adversity on top of your team going on the road to face one of the best teams in the country. It just adds more to this game. This huddle gets set to send us underway. Cooper Pennington back deep for the Rhodes College Lynx. First game or the second game of SAA play as we are underway from one Trinity place in San Antonio, Texas. Pennington is going to run this one out from his own goal line past the 10, trying to get to the 20 where he's going to be stopped just short as Rhodes will take over at the 18-yard line. And here comes Evan Reeder making his first collegiate start. It was Houston Wilhelm who started the first three games for Rhodes, went 2-1. and one. Got knocked out of the game in the third quarter last week, but Evan Reeder came in. He played well. He came into a game where Rhodes was down 14 nothing, was able to lead them back and send them to overtime. Yeah, not just send them to overtime, but... He gave this offense and this team an opportunity to win it at the end of regulation. Obviously a really, really tough loss ultimately for this Lynx team, but showing a lot of signs of growth. Going to be interesting to see early on how they respond here in San Antonio. First play goes to the halfback, Robert Daniel. Daniel had six carries for 19 yards last week against center, and they're going to try and get this ground game going to help the young quarterback. Yeah, and a little bit of a bobble on the snap right there. I saw Trinity's defensive front shift. You can see number zero in that box right there. That's Mac Douglas, who typically plays that walk-down defensive in position. They have him back with the rest of the linebackers, now back up, maybe going to bring a little bit more pressure as that snap is tipped. But Reed are able to control it and complete that pass for another short gain, that time out to the 25. Decent gain on second down. It'll bring up third, as you're going to see the replay here. And a good job by the young quarterback to gather that one, set himself, get the ball out quickly, knowing that the timing was going to be off, but he didn't waste that play. Didn't turn into a negative. A good job to catch that one. At least get hands on it rather than letting it go over his head. And you put yourself now in a position, third and manageable, to start the day. John Hampton making that catch his first of the day. Third down for Rhodes. Reader under immediate pressure. He's going to throw it. It's going to be caught. That's going to be short of the first down marker. As it'll bring up fourth down for the Lynx. Yeah, and it was number 24, Ryan Arnold, playing out of that kind of nickel linebacker position for Trinity, who walked down from the slot, was making pursuit from the wide side of the field, had a lot of ground to cover, but put just enough pressure on Reeder to force him out of the pocket, make a throw on the run. It was a good play by the young quarterback, but just not enough space to pick up the first down for the Lynx, and they're going to be forced to punt. So three and out for Rhodes, as this one nearly blocked. It'll land at about the 40 and it'll take a Rhodes bounce inside the 35, and that is where the Trinity Tigers will take over. They've been humming offensively as of late, and we'll see what they can do on this opening drive. Yeah, and again, we'll return to that BSC game where Coach Urban wasn't thrilled by the offensive start. They were forced on their first drive of the afternoon to punt from right around the 50-yard line. Even if they hadn't scored in their first drives of the season against St. John's, against Mary Harden Baylor, they were able to at least push the ball down the field in that St. John's game, got stopped on a fourth and goal from about the one yard line. So it set them up in just great field position for the defense. It's the give to Carmouche. Carmouche fighting past the line of scrimmage and ultimately gonna be brought down for about a gain of four. 
So we're gonna see how they come out here this afternoon. One thing that has become an emerging theme is just trying to establish the ground game in a way that we haven't seen the past couple of years and really didn't even see week one against St. John's. A little second down and we'll call it seven. This Tiger offense trying to get to a better start than they did last week. Play action. Horn over the middle, sliding but incomplete. Tried to go for Caleb Crawford down the, the middle of the field, but ultimately incomplete with the low throw. Yeah, and Crawford was coming open over the middle of the field. He had a member of that link secondary kind of running in stride next to him, as we'll see on this replay. I think Tucker Horn had the right decision in mind, trying to underthrow him and allow him to come back to the ball just a bit. Unfortunately for Crawford, just slipped in trying to do so, and that one fell incomplete. So third and six now after the incompletion. Horn, and yeah, that's gonna be caught, but sh just short of the first down. That's B.J. Rainey, the speedy wideout, and the Tigers will have a decision here on fourth and one. It looks like they're gonna send out the punt unit. A little bit of a surprise, but again, first drive of the day, recognize that you're still in your own territory. One thing we have seen previously is this special teams unit willing to go for it. You see number 21, Caleb Harmel, an All-American linebacker lined up in that up back position. We've seen him get direct snaps before. Fourth and one scenario here. We've also seen Eli Gaiman throw it. Gaiman will punt this one, a directional kick. It'll hit and go inside the 10 yard line. A good punt from Gaiman as this will roll all the way to the four. We know how much both of these teams value the field position game and recognize how large special teams can play into a football game. It's a good punt from Eli Gaiman there. Yeah, great punt from Gaiman. Great coverage. So everyone got down the field, elected to let that one roll. It got all the way down inside the five yard line. A couple of years ago, we saw Eli Gaiman have just an absolutely awesome season in SAA play. Was honored as one of the all conference players at the position. He's been really good to start this season and has this defense in great position as they try and get the ball back to the offense. From their own five, Reader to the outside and that's gonna be incomplete. Had it for a second, intended target was Brent Barlow. Three catches for 31 yards and a touchdown in the overtime period against center. And we're seeing exactly what we talked about in the open. Getting the ball out of your young quarterback's hands quickly. So one step drop, turn, and throw in rhythm. If you're Brent Barlow on the outside, you got to do everything you can to haul that one in. It's not going to break for a huge play, but it's going to get you out of the shadow of your own end zone. There's a give. Trying to fight for yardage, but nowhere to go. This Tiger defense all over that. Caleb Harmel in the backfield. Yeah, and it's a ton to deal with up front with this yeah, Trinity man, box. A lot of big boys on that de defensive line. You can see it in your picture now. 91, Carson Bird. 95, Jacob Munoz. And on the far right, number 93, Harris Good. All three guys weighing in at 250 plus on the defensive line. They play quick, they play with strength. They're a handful and they keep these linebackers clean and Caleb Harmel showing off some speed to get into the gap on that last play. Third down, Reader's gonna run. Reader has a lane and he's got the first down. All the way up to the 30 yard line. O'Gunderin able to chase him down. But Reader able to make something happen on third down to keep the drive going. Yeah, this is another thing that I think we're going to see out of number seven this afternoon. You see Harris Good getting upfield, but offensive linemen there doing a nice job of staying engaged, allowing their young quarterback to just step up in the pocket. He recognizes there's a lot of green grass in front of him, makes a nice decision to just tuck it and get the first down and some more yardage after that. Gain of 29 on the play. Reader going over the middle, incomplete. 
The dangerous throw there. Trey King able to get his hands on it. Couldn't quite reel it in. Yeah, you said dangerous throw. You're sure right about that one. Hanging up in the air, starting, starting to flutter just a bit. Trey King doing a nice job from behind the receiver to come through and break it up. But if your reader have to put that one on a line right there to avoid those safeties coming over for perhaps an interception. See number 37 right there was the safety. Quinn McDermott, who was closing on that one. Second down and 10 for Rhodes. Play clock running down, they get the snap off and they will blow it dead. Timeout, Rhodes, their first timeout of the half. So timeout called by Rhodes to avoid the penalty. Yeah, and a good decision from Coach Duncan there to ultimately burn a timeout early on in the game. I think you understand in the circumstances here, a young quarterback on the road, the weight of this one, there's going to be some issues getting everybody lined up. You want to keep him comfortable and at least at the chains, and that's what that timeout does. You don't really mind burning one in the first half. You want to get him settled, keep him in manageable situations, which is exactly what you do by not losing five right there. Really get the offense set after that big run that he had on that third down scramble. See if you can't keep something going here. We've seen, obviously, Reader get the ball out of his hands rather quickly. Talked about that drop from Brent Barlow. And then he followed that with that lofty throw over the middle, but now we're going to see a two-back set for the Lynx. Second down and 10, and they'll swing it out to one of those backs. Hard hit. Eventually brought down, guess who? Caleb Harmel in there, Casey Hampton in the area as well as that's Robert Daniel on second down. I see him go in motion here, but I think with that, you had some of the members of the secondary, as you mentioned, number three, safety Casey Hampton, who was one of the first people there, just flowing with that on the motion. Caleb Har Harmel obviously filling really nicely as well from the linebacker spot. This yeah. is a team that's hard to beat going east to west like that because of the speed of this linebacker core. Third and 10, they'll run a draw play. And the Tigers are going to sniff that one out. Maybe a gain of one. But that'll likely force a punt from Rhodes. But if you're this Rhodes offense, you did exactly what you really needed to do to control a football game. Get the ball out of the shadow of your end zone, which is exactly what Reader did on his scramble. Give this special teams unit the chance to flip the field again. Obviously, the Trinity offense and special teams and Eli Gaiman did a good job in pinning them within their own five, but now Rhodes has the chance to do the same and flip the field, hopefully in their advantage with a good punt here. Punt away as this one returnable. And he's got a lane, taking it past the 50, brought down at about the 47. So a good return for Trinity to flip the field once again. Their offense will take over in plus territory. It was a talking point for us yesterday in our conversation with Coach Duncan. What do these teams need to do to be successful this afternoon? He talked about the typical things, the ball control, flipping field position. But he also talked about returners on each side, about how Rhodes could make it an advantage for them, but how this Trinity team has a couple of really good ones themselves and how they need to keep them in check. It was a really good return to get into opponent territory right there to start this drive. As a give there on first down, Justin that'll be Winston Hutchison, or Justin Carmouche rather, on first down. Second and five from the Carmouche with the carries on that first drive of the day and gets the first one of the second drive of the afternoon, but on comes legend Grigsby in the backfield to the right of Tucker Horn to get his first action of the afternoon. Second down and five, Manego will go in mo motion. Horn, under pressure, he's gonna try and get away, trying to try and run for it, out of bounds. Maybe a gain of two, it'll bring up third down. 
Yeah, and that was really the first pressure we've seen this afternoon on Tucker Horn. That one taking a while to develop, but ultimately just a good job in coverage by this link secondary, forcing Tucker Horn to hold on to this football defensive line doing their job. It looked like it was number 98, Thomas Conroy, who provided the pursuit right there. Tucker Horn not having anything downfield, so just having to tuck it and get out of bounds to lose a couple. Third down and seven. Clean pocket for Horn. Over the middle, that is going to be caught. Matthew Kovacevic, the tight end, making the catch on third down. And it looks like he's going to have just enough to move the chains. And not a name that we call a lot. This offensive scheme using the tight ends typically to block in the running game or an extra blocker in the passing game. But a nice big body who gets to that yard marker right there, uses his back to box out the defender and then kind of just falls backwards right across that first down line to gain. That was Kovacevic's second catch of the season. His first came last week and it was a touchdown. First and 10 for the Tigers. As they'll give it up the middle, it's Grigsby with some speed. Grigsby close to the first down marker. And it looks like he's gonna have enough. This Tigers offense all of a sudden moving the ball. It's always an interesting look when you have your quarterback in shotgun and you have your running back offset behind him. But on a run like that, it makes a lot of sense. And with a guy like Legend Grigsby, it makes a lot of sense. You're gonna see BG Rainey go in motion, but it just allows Grigsby to get downhill, showcase some of the speed he has, and ultimately earn another first down for this offense. A lot of motion today for the Tigers, a lot of eye candy for Rhodes. As it'll be first down and 10. Play action, Horn. To the end zone, caught for the touchdown! Ryan Merrifield, his first of the season, and the Tigers take the early lead. And Merrifield breaking a little bit of a dry spell for himself there. You mentioned his first touchdown of the year. He's been the most popular target, not just this season, but probably the last three years for Tucker Horn. Finally finds himself putting some points on the board for the offense. Just a great route, a great play fake by Tucker Horn. This offense had the box loaded with a two tight end set right there. You had Grigsby set behind Tucker Horn yet again, had him coming downhill as Tyler Huddle is able to knock that one through the uprights for the extra point. But Merrifield coming wide open. Tucker Horn with plenty of time and space to deliver that one right in between the numbers. So they might not have gotten points on the board on their first drive of the afternoon, but they come back, respond. Ryan Merrifield with his first touchdown catch of the season. And now... Rose is going to have to find a way to answer. Merrifield started to get it in gear last week against Birmingham Southern. Seven catches for 127 yards, but that his first touchdown of the year. Such a dominant wide receiver for the Tigers. That game against Harden Simmons in the playoffs, down 7 0. It was really Ryan Merrifield that turned it around. And Trinity eventually able to win that game. As now it'll be Rhodes' turn to respond. They get out of the shadow of their own goalposts, but then the Tigers march right down the field. We saw one Trinity returner make a nice play, set up the offense well for the Lynx. Pennington not going to have the opportunity on that one as Huddle sends it through the end zone for the touchback. It's going to be Reeder back out there now for the third time this afternoon. This time starting from the 25, trying to get things underway. Third drive of the game for Rhodes. They have yet to score. Reeder had a nice run on that previous drive, gain of 29. But Rhodes ultimately forced to punt. As now they're behind on the scoreboard after a touchdown toss from Tucker Horn to Ryan Merrifield. First and 10 as this crowd starts to get back into it. 
Reader rolling out. Throwing down the sideline, incomplete. Too far for his receiver. Tend to target was Brett Barlow. And a little similar to the offensive set that we saw Trinity score on a moment ago. The Lynx opting to load the box right there, but getting Reader on the roll to his left, the sophomore left-handed quarterback. So second down and 10. Play clock down to 10. Rhodes has it thrown 29 as that give is to Robert Daniel. And it was actually Taylor Haas who was in there, Robert number Daniel eight the at carry. quarterback for the Lynx. But after that Two give, we do see Evan Reeder trot back onto the field. So a third and five scenario third right down, here, and the starter comes three, back yeah. into the game. Didn't catch which of the two young quarterbacks it was that was in the game on first down. I think it was Reeder who was rolling out to his left and maybe just came out for a play there. Either way, it'll be third down and six for Rhodes. Here's Reeder going to the sideline. It's caught, but a big hit by Trey King. Spot's going to be close, and it looks like they're going to have enough for the first down. Yeah, opting to give it to him. Reader standing in there, letting his receiver come open on the near side of the field, delivering a strike right at the down and distance. It was a good hit by Trey King right there, just unable to jar that ball loose. A little bit interesting. This Trinity defensive front still electing to bring three on that third down, not getting home on the young quarterback. This time four defensive linemen walked down with Mac Douglas there, providing a lot of trouble for this Rhodes offensive line. They can't get a ton of push, but they've kept their young quarterback clean and upright so far here in the first quarter. So we're going to have to see if this Trinity defensive front, this defensive box, elects to do something different, whether it's bring one of those linebackers on the blitz or just, again, walk down that fourth. Second and 10 for Rhodes. Plenty of time. Going over the middle, overthrown, and that was dangerous. What do they say, Luke? Tips and overthrows. That could have been a turnover. Yeah, but I think I saw a flag fly on the far side of the field. A little bit odd. It's number 94, Amir Mustafa, who was over the football, looked to be the one that jumped. Not something you see very frequently. The guy lining up on top of the football who has the best seat in the house to see when it snapped be the one jumping into the neutral zone, but Second and five for Rhodes from the Either court. way, Rhodes going to pick up the free five yards right there. So it'll be second and five after the penalty on Amir Mustafa. Play action. Under pressure this time, having to roll out. And that pass is caught along the sideline. That was Austin Smith. And for the first time today, Rhodes will have it on the Trinity side of the field. Yeah, and just a nice play by Smith right there. We'll see on the replay. Not sure if Reeder saw him down there. Does a just phenomenal job of keeping his shoulders turned as much as possible. And it does look like Smith got that foot in bounds. Just great camera work down on the field. But a great job by the wide receiver understanding the situation. Just a scramble drill putting himself in his quarterback's line of vision and Reader again doing a nice job to get his shoulders turned, putting that one in a position where only his guy can go and get it. As you mentioned, Rhodes in Trinity territory for the first time this afternoon. One yard carry for Knox on first down. That was just a great throw by Reader rolling to his opposite side. Remember Reader's a lefty. Jonathan Nwobodo applying the pressure on that play. A great throw from the quarterback making his first start. Second down and nine coming up. Knox remains in the game for the Lynx. Reader under some pressure. And that one's going to be incomplete, intended for Barlow. 
you're just putting as much on that one as possible. The situation where you have multiple defenders bearing down in your face as he did just there. Certainly don't want to underthrow that one lofted into the air. Probably best case scenario for the Lynx right there is that one sails out of bounds, uncatchable for anyone, but that includes this Trinity defense who had several hats in the area. Third down and nine. Throw to the sideline, that's gonna be caught. But it looks like it's gonna be short, so a decision coming up for Rhodes. It might be about fourth and two. Again, the Trinity defensive front electing to bring just three. Reader having plenty of time to stand in there and deliver that one. There's Cannon Starkey, who is that near side linebacker, walked down briefly and then dropped into coverage. He was there with Trey King on the near side to make sure that the Lynx weren't able to pick up the first down. Fourth down and this crowd making some noise. Rhodes deciding to go for it. Reader. Over the middle, intercepted! Caleb Harmel, and he's got room! Caleb Harmel down the sideline, and he's gonna score! A pick six for the All-American linebacker, and the Tigers take a 13-0 lead. Well, I would say Caleb Harmel's having a great time playing at home here in San Antonio. Second call of the season for us. That's Caleb Harmel's third interception already. He returns that one to the house for six, and he just ran away from everybody on that play. He said he was a former quarterback his last interception. I would believe that he was a former running back or wide receiver based on that. Harmel speedy down the sideline. He was gone as huddles on for the PAT. And no problem there, 14 nothing. the Tigers. A pick six is their defense making some plays. Yeah, and a little bit similar to what we saw in that Mary Harden Baylor game when Armel had his first two picks of the year, just standing kind of in the middle of the field, playing middle linebacker, makes Reader miss, and then, as we said, runs away from the rest of the field for the house call. Caleb Armel just spectacular here in the first handful of games this season. That's his third interception, we'll say it again. But just flying around everywhere on the field. An interesting decision for the Lynx to go for it there on fourth down. Reader not really having his first couple of options. It looks like they had twins split out on either side on that one. The Trinity secondary doing a nice job walking up, jamming those receivers at the line of scrimmage. It was number one, Austin Smith, who was able to connect with a couple of times on this drive to extend it. But he was jammed at the line of scrimmage, didn't get a clean release. A little bit of pressure on Reader. Ultimately, he decided to throw that one away. But away was actually right into the arms of Caleb Harm. As Huddle will send this one away, Pennington not going to have a play. So the second touchback for Huddle. He had 10 touchbacks on 17 kickoffs coming into this one. But such a long, promising drive for Rhodes, and then so deflating to have that happen. How do they respond here? I think you have to continue to do what was working for you. And right now, it's accepting that this defense is only gonna send three up front and take those five, six yard gains, those little pitch and catches that are getting Reader comfortable. I think this Trinity defense might have to shift some things to get a little bit more pressure on him. You don't want him to be comfortable drive after drive. Obviously, it's 14-0 on the board with just under two minutes left here in the quarter, but I think the way that they've started this game outside of that turnover has been a promising start and what you would want to see out of a very, very young offense. A punishing run from Knox there on first down as Rhodes tries to settle things down under two minutes remaining in this first quarter. Trying to get a score back after they gave up the pick six to go down two. And Knox really going to be the key here for me in the running game this afternoon. A bigger back weighing in and closer to 225. And when you're not getting great push for the offensive line, 
I think you want to put it in the hands of the bigger guy. Let him get downhill as he does there again. Gets enough for the first down with about seven, maybe six yards on that run. Another good gain for Knox as he's gotten back-to-back -back handles. It's been him and Robert Daniel from the backfield today as Rhodes has tried to possess the ball. It looks like they lead the league or the, the country in time of possession. Almost 39 minutes. Coach Duncan saying that might be a little inflated because of the triple overtime, but still impressive either way. And it's first down and 10 coming up for the Lynx. They'll give to Knox again. Knox lowers his shoulder and takes it past the 40. Yeah, and Knox with that bigger frame, a little bit better at running through the arm tackles of that first defensive line. Right now, doing a little bit of a better job of getting through that initial contact. Right now, Amir Mustafa in there playing at nose over the guard with a couple of other second string players on this defense. Knox taking advantage of it at the moment and forcing these linebackers to be the one to step up and get the stops. Five seconds remaining in this first quarter and it looks like Rhodes has no intention of snapping the football. End of one here in San Antonio. Trinity leads 14 to nothing. This defense showing up. And we're back on Tiger Network. Start of the second quarter here in the Alamo City as we switch sides. Rhodes has it at their own 41, second down and six. And they'll give to Knox once again. Knox trying to make something happen, but nowhere to go. Brought down by a host of maroon jerseys, maybe a gain of one. What we talked about in the first quarter was this Lynx offensive line maybe not getting great push, but the one thing you can't do when you do have a bigger back in there is allow that early penetration. It's exactly what this defensive front got on that one. Got in the backfield, forced Knox to put his foot in the ground and change direction. But when that happens, he can't get going as quickly as Daniel can. So third down and eight coming up. They have yet to throw the ball on this drive. Reader rolling out, crosses body, incomplete. Big hit to knock the ball away. Alex LeBlanc couldn't hang on to the football and Rhodes will be forced to punt. And that was number 37, Quinn McDermott, who closed on that one and made sure that LeBlanc didn't hold on to the football. It was a good throw from Reader. found a guy right at the sticks. Just a ton of traffic right there. And even if it wasn't for McDermott and Arnold closing down to break that pass up, I'm not sure he would have been able to hold on to that one. So Rhodes on the punt once again. As he gets this one away, a good directional kick. Lamont Nickelberry will have a chance to run it back. Cuts back past the 25, brought down at the 27. And that is where Tucker Horn and the Tigers offense will take over. They've settled in a little bit. They now have the 14 point lead, went down the field, got it to Ryan Merrifield. And in the second quarter, they're in good shape. 
but they haven't been forced to do a ton early on in this one. Obviously not the way they wanted to start the game, being forced to punt on their first drive of the afternoon. And then Lamont Nickelberry helping the offense out a ton with a nice little punt return to put the ball into Link's territory to open that second drive. And then it was a home run ball in some capacity from about 30 yards out, Horn to Merrifield for the touchdown. So we're gonna see if this offense can do what they've done all year and be a little slower, be a little bit more methodical, run some plays, take some time off the clock. A good start right there, picking up a first down immediately. Push pass to B.J. Rainey. As he ran down the sideline for the first down. They'll have it at their own 38-yard line. Horn swings it out, incomplete. Intended for Winston Hutchison, it'll be second and 10. Yeah, and this offense utilizing those guys out of the backfield more this year than they did a season ago. But on that one, Hutchison targeted. But for the Lynx, Jake Duncan had come off, released immediately from the linebacker position. He was out there in the flat as well as we're going to see number 40 for this defensive front jump. Smart play by that Trinity offensive line. I don't know who it is on that near side. I think maybe Connor Keel number 65 who reached out and made sure to make contact and get this Trinity offense a free five yards right there. A headsy play from the tackle, Connor Keel. And as you said, Luke, a free five yards for the Tigers. And it'll be second and five for Trinity. They'll give it to Rainey again. Rainey trying to get to the edge. And nowhere really to go. It'll bring up third down. Yeah, the Lynx having just seen that play, this time do a much better job of forcing things east and west. It was number 40 who had just jumped offside, Min Young, who got a little bit of a push, forced B.J. Rainey to bow that one a little bit towards the sideline, and then again, Duncan and some other members of that secondary coming out to finish that play off. As that's Hutchinson, a punishing run past midfield. And he'll pick up the first down for Trinity. So a good job on third down from the Tigers. We mentioned it earlier, the seventh best third down offense in the country. And you use the word punishing right there. None of these backs in this rotation are your typical bruiser. Hutchison, Grigsby, Carmouche all weighing in around 180, but Hutchison just doing a nice job of understanding down and distance right there, only needing two yards for a first down, so he put his head down and went and got it. But on that one, just trips himself up in the backfield and ends up with maybe a yard as he checks himself out of the game. Justin Carmouche comes back on. A lot of short gains for the Tigers on this drive as they move it past midfield. It'll be second and nine after the Hutchinson carry. Fake to Rainey. Horn over the middle. That's going to be caught. Cole Monego at about the 31, and the Tigers move the chains once again. That first touchdown catch of the afternoon by Ryan Merrifield, Cole, you talked about the fact that he has really gotten going, especially last week at BSC. Cole Menego with the reception here is the guy on the depth chart right behind Merrifield, and he's really come into himself this season. We saw him make a huge grab against Mary Harden Baylor in the playoffs last year. It was really an exclamation mark on his season. He's just taken that and run with it here in 2023 as we see a handoff on the right side. Justin Carmouche tripped up at about the 22. A good gain on first down for Trinity as they're trying to blow this one open. We mentioned last season Rhodes lost to Trinity 45 to nothing. Not a much better start so far today as the Tigers approaching the red zone after that run. Just great job from the offensive line right there. Everybody staying engaged on their blocks. 
including that tight end on the right side. Carmouche up the middle inside the 20. And they're going to give him plenty for the first down as the Tigers will take it inside the red zone. First down, Tigers on the 18. So first down and 10 at the 18-yard line. Carmouche remains the back for Trinity. They fake it to him. Horn, end zone, caught for the touchdown. Ryan Merrifield again, is second of the game. And the Tigers take a 20 to nothing lead with 9.39 remaining in the half. And this is what happens when you really get that running game established in your first couple of drives. Seen a couple of play fakes that have really gotten this defense to bite, sucking up the safeties just enough. That time, it left both of the receivers on the outside, Venego and Merrifield playing at the top and bottom of the screen, wide open. I think they both threw double moves right there, ending up back towards that inline or that sideline in the end zone. I saw Manego at the top of the screen who had come open on his route. I think it was the same thing from Merrifield down at the bottom of the screen. Tucker Horn really had either of them to go to. So you see just a ton of separation there. Merrifield waltzing into the end zone, all of a sudden with two touchdowns to his name on the 2023 campaign. His first two of the season. Ryan Merrifield, such a critical weapon for Trinity. And all Tigers fans want to see him get going. It's been everybody else who stepped up. We saw Cole Manega with a big catch on that drive. He's caught a touchdown in the prior three games. As Trinity leads this one 21 to nothing. 9.39 remaining in this half. It's beginning to slip away for Rhodes. They're going to have to find a way to get back into this one, and you would assume it's going to have to start now. Yeah, I think you're right. You just can't let this one unravel much more than it is right now. I think what Coach Duncan said yesterday remains true. You just want to continue to compete. That's what we're going to have to see from them on this drive right here. You've had some things that had success. You string together a couple of nice little drives. Ultimately, I think you want to see your offense go out and put some points up on the board. Give yourself just a little bit of hope. Solid return from Cooper Pennington as he takes it to the 27. As Rhodes down early, they have yet to be down by this much. They were down 14 points in the third quarter against center. They were able to come back in that game tie it up at 17 and send it to overtime. They actually had a chance with a 27 yard field goal to potentially win the game. Missed it and eventually lost in triple overtime. So Rhodes that close to being three and oh. But they're gonna have to do a lot here if they're gonna be three and one at the end of this day. Reader, under pressure over the middle, that's gonna be real then. That's Key Aloha, the wide receiver from Hawaii, bringing it in, and he takes it to the Trinity side of the field at the 49. Again, a nice snag from Key Aloha right there. Just high pointing that football, displaying some strong hands over the middle. A risk every single time that you have on those in cutting routes is that you take a hit from a safety, but he put his body on the line a little bit. It was a nice, nice throw from Reeder to start this drive, ripping that one a little bit more. We took note of the first couple of attempts over the middle early on this game that maybe weren't the most confident throws. I think if anything, you want to be throwing the, the ball harder over the middle when you have those safeties to worry about. We saw him rip it to the boundary a couple of times and connect with his right wide receivers. Just bring that same mindset anytime you throw the ball over the middle of the field as well. Try and get it to your receiver even quicker. Just put it on him on a rope. Second and 10 after the first down carry. Some motion in the backfield and incomplete. There's a flag. And they will 
get the timeout off. So the second timeout for Rhodes with 8.22 remaining in this half as we'll take a break on Tiger Network. And we're back on Tiger Network after that short break. Second and 10 after the timeout for Rhodes. Reader incomplete. Going for Kialoa again. Trey King on the coverage, and it'll bring up third and long. And that throw back just a little bit to the loftier ones over the middle of the field that we had seen. Kialoa maybe with just a step on Trey King right there. Reader having the right idea to stay aggressive and attack this defense. That one just floated a bit too far for his wide out. Now the Lynx facing another third and long. Third and 10 at the 49. Reader under pressure, trying to escape. Throws incomplete out of bounds. And Rhodes is going to be forced to punt once again. Yeah, and that time, Trinity electing to bring a couple of extra guys. I think it was a total of five in pursuit of the quarterback right there. I saw for sure number 52, James Gunrin, coming. But a nice job from Knox to step up and pass pro. And in addition to that, it was number 17 for Trinity who was out there. That would be John Cole McAdams coming from the secondary on that one, showing great pursuit after he got around the edge. But nonetheless, the Lynx forced to punt it here again with Lamont Nickelberry back at his own 10-yard line waiting to return this one. Whistle blows as this play is going to be blown dead. And it'll be a delay of game on road, so they're going to back that up five yards. Maybe not the worst thing in the world here, being at about midfield. Yeah, a little bit of extra room for your punter. I think from the 50 at this level of competition, you're pretty comfortable. An extra five yards won't hurt. Certainly have to boom this one. I snap, and this will be a short punt. Takes a bit of a Rhodes bounce inside the 20. And downs at the 18 yard line. All in all, not the worst result right there. You mentioned a high snap, but a good job to corral it, get that punt away, pin this Trinity offense inside their own 20. But now, what we've seen from this offense is again, referenced earlier, these really slow, methodical drives. Under eight minutes left in the first half. I wouldn't be surprised to see them milk a lot of time off the clock right here. Horn on first down. Going to take a shot for Merrifield. Has him in stride. Merrifield still going. Inside the 20. Inside the 10. He's going to score. The hat trick for Ryan Merrifield. And we don't always see the announcer jinx work in favor of the team, but that's essentially what happened right there. I thought they might take a little bit more time off the clock, but immediately the home run ball to Ryan Merrifield again, who just shuts me up. But man, he has come on like an absolute animal in the last two weeks. Over 100 yards last week on the road to open up SAA play. Already should be over 100 yards on the afternoon here in San Antonio. Extra point by Huddle is right down the middle, and it is 28 to nothing. Trinity in the blink of an eye. 
And Coach Duncan's not going to like that when we talked to him. He talked about taking the top off this Trinity offense, not allowing them to have the big play. Well, I think that falls in that category. Yeah, I mean, it's a hard thing to do to keep the top on this team. Talked about Colmenego a couple of minutes ago. The two of them on the outside are a really, really tough duo to stop, especially when they're playing at different points in time. Theoretically, you can get them on the field together, and there you see just a Randy Moss-esque stat line. Three catches, 127 yards, three touchdowns. Just an absolute day for Ryan Merrifield here in San Antonio. But when you have him on the field and then him coming off, being replaced by Cole Manego, your job doesn't get any easier. Both of these guys, fantastic route runners, fantastic hands, fantastic, fantastic speed, as we saw from Merrifield right there in the open field, just running away from the defender. Randy Moss stat line, a good way to put that. We're in Texas, so I'm sure there are some Cowboys fans out there that remember that Thanksgiving back in the 1990s where Randy Moss had three touchdowns on his only three catches of the game as Pennington takes this one from his own goal line. Pennington makes a move up the middle and a good return from Cooper Pennington, but there is a flag down at about the 15-yard line, so this one might be coming back. Yeah, and there was a little bit of extracurricular as this one continued, but mostly it seemed like it was behind the play. You're going to see number 87 right there, the bottom of your screen, just had hands on the back of the Trinity coverage man. You still don't see them come into your screen because they were going back and forth at it a little bit. That's ultimately going to cost the Lynx their best return of the afternoon, set them back inside their 10-yard line. So they'll start at the 9 after that promising return had them out closer to the 40. Penalty on Ethan Presley, the first-year tight end, He's playing special teams today for Rhodes. Not great starting field position. They'll have it at their own 15-yard line. Already down 28 to nothing. Reader going to keep it up the middle and eventually brought down after a gain of three. And not something that we've seen so far this afternoon, but the option on or from this Rhodes offense on that one, Reader selling that fake and able to pick up three yards. It's exactly what you got to do. Not what you need to do in a 28 nothing game, but earlier on in contests, you have the opportunity to pick up and chip away at defenses by picking up three, four, five yard gains every time out. It's going to be incredibly successful. High snap and the give as that'll be about a gain of two for Robert Daniel. Third and manageable coming up for Rhodes. But at this point, those third and three situations are exactly what the Trinity defense want to see. Even if Rhodes is able to pick up a first down right here by getting four or five yards, they can go down the field in that manner, picking up five, six yards here and there the rest of this drive and get on the board and still be down by three scores. That's what this defense loves to do. That's what this Trinity team wants to do. They want to create this big hole where they have a ton of wiggle room for this defense to work with. Because even when it is just a third and three, they're spectacular like that at closing gaps quickly. Those linebackers coming up to finish plays as you see Caleb Harmel getting up off the field again after making a stop on a third and short. Who else would make the tackle? Caleb Harmel everywhere on the field. Feels like there's 11 of them as Robert Daniel two yards short. And Rhodes will be forced to punt once again. Quick note on the Rhodes special teams unit. It's been Coleman Clay from Mountain Brook, Alaska handling the punting today. Houston Wilhelm, the quarterback who got knocked out of last week's game. Also the punter for Rhodes usually. So they've had to fill in at both of those positions. As he gets this one away, Nickelberry still back there and takes a hard hit. Good job by Nickelberry hanging on to the football. Still good field position coming up at about the 40. 
Yeah, and this one a little awkward. An end over oh, end yeah. kick off the foot. Not a ton of hang time for Nickelberry to get under it. He still wanted to make his best effort to get a return off. But it was a really, really nice job from Brent Barlow right there. Just closing ground quickly, putting a nice hit on him. So you mentioned, Cole, a nice job from the first year to hang on to that football and give the Trinity offense another chance here in the first half. They'll spot the ball at the 42-yard line. Already up 28 to nothing. Horn still in there at quarterback. Throwing over the middle, and that ball is caught by Ryan Merrifield. Still on his feet, brought down inside Rhodes territory. So not a touchdown, but a one-handed grab for Merrifield. I mean, in some respects, ruining his stat line right there, but adding to the highlight reel by just throwing his mid up there and hauling it in. And then after the fact, refusing to go down easily. That one coming out a little bit wobbly, but just gets his hand behind it. That one hits his palm, and he hauls it into his chest and makes a couple of men miss. So a gain of eight, but about the most impressive gain of eight that you're probably going to see today. As we go play action again, Horn throwing for Manego incomplete. Had his hands on it, couldn't quite reel it in. It'll bring up third down. Yeah, a great, great route right there. Again, coming clear of the defense by five, ten yards. A ton of space to operate with. Tucker Horn putting that one on the money, maybe floating it just a little bit. It looked like each of those last two balls came out a little awkwardly. Both of them catchable, but not the spiral that makes it easy for your wide receivers to haul in. And now Trinity finds themselves in a third and short. Third down and two as they'll give it to Grigsby. Grigsby trying to spin, and this is going to depend on the spot. Both of the line judges coming in right about where that first down marker is. And they will move the chains, first down Tigers. Again, the offensive play calling, just masterful here for Trinity. You see the third and mediums, third and seven or eights where they run the receivers. It's just to the down and distance, have them run those comebackers very frequently that time a third and very short just give it to your back who understands the down and distance as we see Merrifield with another reception here on the screenplay making a ton of guys miss as he dances back and forth design screen for Ryan Merrifield and he picks up another first down and they're finding any way they can to get the ball to 13. yeah we've talked about two guys on each side of the offense this afternoon Cole Ryan Merrifield or excuse me each side of the ball Ryan Merrifield and Caleb Harmel, two leaders on either side of the ball, but two guys that have a ton of experience, both fifth years on this team, which I know is something that's incredibly unique about this roster makeup. Give to Grigsby, trying to spin away, stays up down the sideline. He stayed in bounds. Grigsby eventually out of bounds at the 15, but they're actually going to bring the ball back to where he was around the sideline. Can't see those feet from our angle here in the booth. The referee is going to say he stepped out of bounds at about the 30-yard line. A good shot of it here. That left foot looked like it was still in. It might be that right foot right there, right at the 29-yard line, as you mentioned, Cole. So a nice positive gain after being spun around a little bit. Horn, wide open Manego. Manego diving for the goal line. And they're gonna mark him at the one. That close to four touchdowns in four weeks for Cole Manego, it'll be first and goal for Trinity. Yeah, and doing a nice job of recognizing where he is on the field. He was running laterally side to side when he caught this one, but I think he recognized might just have a chance if he dives and extends. Couldn't get that ball to the pylon, but really, really close. And as you mentioned, it gets them down to about the one yard line. But based on that replay, I wouldn't be surprised if he was even closer than that. First and goal from the one. Fake. End zone touchdown. Guess who? Ryan Merrifield, his fourth touchdown of the game. 
And the Tigers have hung 30 in the first half. 30 plus in the first half. Just keep counting them. That's four on the afternoon for Ryan Merrifield, who I think once his number called for a D3 Team of the Week honor, just six catches, 151 yards, four touchdowns, a long on the day of 82 yards, but each more impressive than the last at this point. Have yourself an afternoon number 13 as Tyler Huddle tacks that one on and nearly hits the scoreboard almost 30 yards behind the uprights. This is a team that's just clicking on all cylinders right here. Another play fake. And Ryan Merrifield just running a nice slant route, getting the separation from the cornerback. It was Torres in coverage on that one. Rhodes has had no answer for that man right there. You see the stat line again, and it's worth showing whenever we can. Long of 82, 151, four touchdowns on six catches. And you mentioned Colmenego being just inches away from his fourth touchdown in four weeks. Just like that, Ryan Merrifield surpassed him in that statistical category. So I'm sure there's going to be a little bit of banter between the two of them. It's like that old adage in fantasy football. When your guy does all the work and then they give it to another guy for the touchdown. <laughs> I think both of those guys happy to be in this position right now, up 35 to nothing, still with about two minutes left to play in the first half. And this is all considering the fact that they weren't able to find the end zone on that first drive of the game. Ever since that point, the Tigers have done whatever they have wanted offensively. As Huddle's getting a workout, he'll kick it off again. This time a short one that'll bounce inside the 10. It'll go out of bounds, but it was touched by the returner. So that is where Rhodes will get the football, right about the eight yard line. Yeah, and an unfortunate break for Rhodes right there. That one, not a great kick from Huddle, angled out of bounds. Have to have the wherewithal not to touch it, let it run out going to draw the flag to bring the football out to the 35 yard line give you your best starting field position instead that one being spotted at around the seven and a half yard line first down Rhodes from the eight yard line so that's where Rhodes will take over as readers in there trying to get something back he's got a minute 54 only one time out to work with though as they give it up the middle and nowhere to go, as that was Knox with the carry. Three timeouts still here in the half for Trinity. I'm not gonna elect to use any of them, and I think Rhodes is gonna just try and take as much time off the clock here as possible. And it seems like that's exactly what they're gonna do as this clock ticks down under a minute 30 remaining. Second down and 11 for the Lynx. As another give. And brought down maybe a gain of two as we approach a minute remaining in that. So we're gonna have to snap it one more time here on third down. Have to assume that after that play this Trinity side not going to elect to take a timeout. Going to let this one run out and go all the way into halftime with a pretty comfortable 35 to nothing lead in San Antonio. Yes, they will have to snap the football one more time, third and nine. As we've hit the 32nd mark in this first half. They'll give it up the middle again. And that should do it for half number one. The Trinity Tigers, a dominating first half, 35 to nothing. As this clock continues to tick away, teams not jogging to the locker room quite yet. As now they'll start to head that way. What a first half for the Tigers, 35 to nothing. They lead Rhodes at home. 
as we've reached halftime here in San Antonio. We'll see you for the second half of action on Tiger Network. Ladies and gentlemen, in just a moment, we will have a performance by the Prowlers.
And welcome back to San Antonio, Texas. So we're here for the second half on Tiger Network. The teams have taken the field and they're ready to play. The final 30 minutes of this one, 35-0. Trinity leads Rhodes. And what a half it's been for the Tigers. They've scored in their last four possessions. They've done whatever they've wanted offensively. And Ryan Merrifield has been absolutely amazing. Yeah, and doing whatever they've wanted is exactly right, Cole. Just in total control of this game. And you think about it, kind of aspects of both conversations that we had with these head coaches. For Rich Duncan in this roadside, you talked about, alluded to in the first half, he wanted to try and keep the top on this Trinity offense. Don't allow for that big home run play. We've seen it a couple of times already here in this one. And with our conversation with Coach Urban, he talked about wanting to not just win football games, but wanting to control them as well. I think the offense did that in every facet of the game. They ran the ball. The offensive line was great. Tucker Horn was on time, in rhythm, got the ball out, on target to his receivers. And guys like Ryan Merrifield, who you also alluded to, did their jobs incredibly, incredibly well. You see the replay on the board of Caleb Harmel and his pick six, where he just ran away from this Rhodes offense. The defense has been much of the same. They haven't been as flashy outside of that play, haven't gotten after Reader for a ton of sacks, haven't had a tough a ton of tackles for loss this afternoon, but they've just done their job. It's been a stalemate up front. This Rhodes offensive line didn't get any push consistently. Even when there were a couple of receptions, you know, nothing was over the top, over the heads of these defensive backs, which is a key. I think ultimately it was a bend, don't break type of approach from that secondary, and that's exactly what happened. There were a couple of times where they gave up some catches. But they weren't getting beat for touchdowns consistently. And the two guys that we've talked about the most, Caleb Harmel, Cole Merrifield, alluded to it in the first half, both fifth-year players, Again, this is an interesting roster for Trinity. A ton of experience. These fifth years, the running backs. Grigsby, who's in his third year as a starting running back. See Tucker Horn, who is a transfer from a Division I school. Obviously, incredible, incredible talent and skill level. 12 of 15 the first half for 220 yards and four touchdowns. And I'd beg to argue that his day is probably over at this point. Evan Reeder getting some good experience on the road against a top team. Certainly going to pay dividends for him down the road, but just simply put, outclassed by the fifth-year quarterback for this Trinity team, who, again, has a ton of fifth-year players on the roster. This roster has 16 fifth-year players as opposed to only two last season. And we did see Ryan back warming up along the sideline, so it looks like he will touch the ball first in this second half. As Rhodes received the opening kick, they'll send us away here as we're underway in second half action. This one will be brought out past the 20 by Nickelberry. Nickelberry stays on his feet and takes it past the 35 to the 36. Nickelberry's been returning punts and kicks today as B.J. Stewart's been out with an injury. And he's done a rather impressive job this afternoon. There was a pretty big hit by number four. I think it was Johnny Milo who was on the return team from Trinity. There was a stalemate and both guys went to the ground. Saw a trainer from the road sideline run out. I think he was cognizant of that hit too, so... The offense a little slow to trot out here, give him the opportunity to clear the field, make sure that everyone's up and healthy to start the second half. And as you mentioned, Ryan Back is who we're going to see at quarterback for Trinity to start the half. This is the time in the game we're going to learn a lot of new names. And the first of them, Ryan Back in at quarterback for Trinity. It was the backup last year as he'll give it to Grigsby. Grigsby cuts up the middle. And has a gain of about six on first down. They'll take it past the 40. Yeah, and something that we talked about in the Mary Harden-Baylor game, this is an offense that's willing to get these running backs going however necessary. 
think eventually they were able to establish a pretty solid push up front in that game at home against the Crusaders. But they also utilized those runs east and west, getting their running backs like Grigsby, who has great speed, outside of those tackles and into open space like they did just there. Grigsby, the team's leading rusher, as back throws to Manego, hit on the spot, and he'll go down about a yard short of the first down. Yeah, and back. Just coming in, trying to settle in right here. Took his time on that one. Had Manego come all the way across the field, hit him in stride. Nice couple of plays to get the more inexperienced quarterback settled into this one. Sets up a sh short, very manageable third down to start the drive. Ryan Back played five games last season, five touchdowns and a pick. So he gives this one to Carmouche. Carmouche past the 50. Brought down at about the 46, and the Tigers rolling down the field once again. A nice little shake of the shoulders at the end of that run. It was number zero, Evan Bird, I think, who was closing from the secondary. Carmouche putting some moves on and making a miss in the open field and was able to dive forward for a couple extra yards on that one. First down and 10 after the Carmouche run. Back, looks quickly, it's caught by Rainey. Rainey makes a man miss. Rainey inside the 40, brought down at about the 35. They've been getting B.J. Rainey involved however they can today. Yeah, and it was good early penetration on the outside from the Lynx defense. I don't know what number it was that caused Rainey to bubble back just a little bit more on that one. See on the replay right here, it looks like it's number 40. You see Rainey heading back to his own end zone, making that defensive lineman miss, and then able to turn up field, display some speed of his own, pick up a first down. Back off play action. Back going deep for the end zone incomplete. But there is a flag. And that might be pass interference, pass intended for Ethan Boyer. Yeah, and that one... Over Boyer's head a little bit. It looks like it went just between his arms as they were outstretched over the top of himself. We'll see on the replay what kind of contact there was here. I think you're right, Cole. That's what we heard come from the field. Referees letting us know that was defensive pass interference. I think whatever the number was there just draped on Ethan Boyer's back a bit too much. That was Jonathan Torres who committed the penalty. 15 yard call in college as the Tigers will take it to the 19 yard line. They have it in the red zone once again. They've scored on their last four possessions. So they give it to Hutchison. Hutchison trying to fight for some extra yardage. He gets three on first down. And it's just a good mix of play calling. Continues even when you have your backup into the game. I think it's something that I noted a couple of years ago on the broadcast. Last season, we didn't see Tucker Horn come to the sideline a ton in the home games. You think about the competition in conference that you had. Birmingham Southern, Barry, a couple of games that were really close on top of Wheaton in the playoff games that were here. Two seasons ago, though, they got the opportunity to get these other guys in. And it's the same Back thing the where they have zone. just these Caught by Coleman Ego. Throws in rhythm as we see again from back right there. So even when it's these second, third string guys that we see come into the game, the offensive coordinator doing a really good job of just simplifying things, making the game really easy for these guys. And they did a good job making it really easy there. A pass just short of the goal line to Coleman Ego, who remains in the game. Give to Grigsby. Grigsby's in. Touchdown, Trinity. And there is going to be a late flag out. Looks like that score is going to count, and that's going to be after the play, so you can put him up for legend Grigsby, 41-0 Tigers. We talked about running outside of the tackles. I think that might have been the case right here, but it was just a great use of vision from legend Grigsby. Saw that the front five were a little bit crowded, not a whole lot of holes opening up. 
amongst his offensive linemen. So he stuck his right foot in the ground, went around that left side of the line, and then I think it might have been his wide receiver, Will Taylor, who was blocking for him, that got the, the bulk of the hit on that carry. As Grigsby just lowered his head and went straight through his wide receiver. You see number two right there, and Grigsby just giving him a little bit of a bump the end of the day. Nice job from the young wide receiver staying on his block. So they make the call on the Tigers that'll be enforced on the kickoff. It will not be Tyler Huddle in to take this extra point. It's going to be the first year River Rocha from Germany as he's going to attempt his first kick of the season. On its way, and good. So Rocha attacks on the extra point, 42-0 Trinity. A ton of leg on that one from Rocha. I think the third Tiger that we've seen come in for kicking duties this season. Always nice to have some, some emergency backups in there, but I think it would be necessary also to mention what Tyler Huddle did last week on the road at Birmingham Southern into the half, able to connect on a 50-yard field goal. Just a huge leg from the guy that we see handling kickoff duties more often than not. He's put away a handful into the end zone for touchbacks this year. It's been a huge luxury for this special teams unit and certainly something to be cognizant of as the year goes along. The fact that in game scenarios, he can come on and he can hit from distance. That 50 yard field goal, the longest in program history when in division three. The record came in there in division two as a 52 yard field goal. As Tyler Huddle putting his name into the Trinity record books last week against Birmingham Southern. Rocha will handle this kickoff and a bit of a short one as it'll float out of bounds at about the 41. So interesting to see what happens here. It lands out of bounds and it would have been better field position if they were to just mark it at the 41 as opposed to putting it at the 35 where the penalty would be enforced. And I'm assuming that it will be at the 41. I don't know how this penalty does get enforced in this scenario but I would have to imagine that Coach Duncan will have the opportunity to just take that ball at the 41, 42 yard line where they're standing now. That'd make the most sense. The Tiger defense ready to go at about that spot. And it looks like they're going to spot the ball at midfield. So apparently, if it goes out of bounds, not beyond the 35-yard line, they put the ball at midfield. So an interesting wrinkle in the football rule book. I think I heard something as well about when kicking from the 20-yard line. So that makes sense because there was a personal foul as Reader runs that one out of bounds, maybe a gain of two. Evan I'm just Reader, learning things. Getting familiar with the rest of this Trinity roster and getting a little bit deeper into the rule book as well this evening, Cole. Always good to have more information. It's a long football season. We've got three more games here that are in the regular season, and we'll see about the postseason if these tri Trinity Tigers can handle business. They're in a good spot to host some playoff games. As it'll be second down and eight. Give up the middle. And not going to get very far. Maybe back to the line of scrimmage, third down and long coming up. We saw and made note of the fact that Ryan Back entered the game at quarterback. It's Cole Monego who brought them down close to the goal line. Technically a second string player for this offense behind Ryan Merrifield, as we made note of in the first half. Legend Grigsby the one that punched it in. All names that got called, but I think just showing how much depth this offense has, it's been the same case for the defense here. So there's a lot of familiar names still in there. Reader throws, that's gonna be caught. 
And a first down, taking it to the 37 yard line. That's Key. That's Keola. See another bit of a wobbly ball. It was number four for Trinity right there, trying to stick his hand in there, get a pass breakup. Colin Betsy. Ultimately, Kialoa able to knock that one into the air just a bit and snag it before a nice little run after Cash gave the links enough for a first down. So a much better start to this drive here in the second half. Give up the middle. Not going to get very far. That's Colby Cook, the senior running back from Clarksville, Tennessee, getting his second carry of the day. And what we talked about at the end of the first half, these two three-yard gains, not something that you want in a game when you're down 42 to nothing. But I think at this point, for this Rhodes program that's continuing to build, trying to make strides year over year, you just want an effort that shows improvement on that first half. You want to forget about the scoreboard, take care of business, control what you can right here. Pass to the outside is caught. That's Brent Barlow, Trey King there to make the tackle. And you really want to try and play the way they are right now. Irregardless of what the score looks like, you want to be cognizant. You want to be focused on yourself. And it feels that way to start this drive, at least. Arguably their best drive of the day. I think the deepest that they've been into this Trinity territory, and they have the opportunity to pick up another first down and keep it going right here. Should also be noted that there are several starters still in there for Trinity, so good improvement for Rhodes on this drive. Third down and one, up the middle. And it'll depend on the spot. The referee on the near sideline not coming in in a good position for Rhodes. And they'll say he maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. It'll bring up fourth and one. And it was Knox in the first half of this Lynx offense getting the carries. We mentioned he was a bigger back standing in at 225. Had a little bit more success running it up the gut. Made the transition here and First drive of the second half, calling upon a different name. Cook gets the carry, and he's not going to get anywhere. Cade wraps in, in the backfield to make the tackle, and the Tigers get a turnover on downs. And another thing that we talked about at the end of that first half was the bend, don't break mentality of the defense. Rhodes doing a nice job to start this half. So you see Cade Rapson pulling back on Cook, making sure that he wasn't leaning forward and trying to get that first down with a second effort right there. Rhodes able to pick up some nice yardage on that drive, but ultimately that Trinity front seven stepping up to get the stop. Fake and a throw to Taylor. Will Taylor pass the 40 yard line? He's gonna be close to the first down. As you start to see new names for Trinity trickle in, Will Taylor being one of them, Johnny Milo got the fake on that play as well. A nice throw on the money on the outside. You see number three, Cole Minego behind the play just a little bit, who did a nice job of holding his block, allowing for Taylor to spring that one, pick up the first down for the Tigers as we have an injury on the field for the Lynx, it's number 12, Pennington, who limps off the field just a bit. Looks like he's moving under his own power, which is always a good thing to see. He went down for just a moment at the request of his teammates. Make sure the referees were aware of it. Give himself a little bit more time to get off the field. Pennington, an important player for Rhodes, a starting safety on this defense that came into this day, ranked 12th in the nation. Also returns kicks and punts for them. So they'll be without him for at least the next few plays. First down and 10 for the Tigers coming up. So they have it at their own 42 yard line. Everybody rating, everybody waiting and now ready to go. Cole, you mentioned the fact that this 
defense came in to today, ranked top 15 in the country. Just a great start. We talked about it. The total points allowed, the improvement in Coach Duncan's first year to second year, obviously a great start here this season. It's a really tall task against a Trinity offense that this year, probably more than any in the past, has been clicking on all cylinders. Tucker Horn back to the form that we saw him in in 2021 where he had 33 touchdowns to just three interceptions. Something to keep an eye on as this season goes along, his efficiency and the way he can take care of the football in the air. Back, throws to the sideline, that's caught by Taylor. Taylor stays in bounds for a little bit, eventually knocked out at the 45. It'll be another first down for the Tigers. But a big aspect of this Lynx defense is the experience that it has. It's a very, very old group. Just one sophomore starting for this unit this season, this week. That would be number 20 for the Lynx, Jonathan Torres at defensive back. But a ton of experience in the box up front in these linebackers. And I think it showed in those first couple of weeks it's just a group that's going to have to have a short memory and get back after it as SAA play continues. Here's a give and taking it down to the 40 yard line. So that's Jackson Williams and Coach Urban told us to look out for him. Something we've talked about on the broadcast this year is this running back room. More often than not, it's the three headed monster, Hutchison, Grigsby, Carmouche, who are getting carries. A ton of experience, guys that have split the load since 2021, but these two young running backs in Milo and Jackson Williams came in last year, both second years on this squad, and Coach Urban just raved about each of them making their presence known, pushing those, those first three guys that we named, and obviously doing a very, very admirable job when they have the opportunity to get touches themselves. That's B.J. Rainey getting the first down as Trinity continues to be efficient offensively, even with several guys that usually don't get playing time. I think that's, again, a testament to the depth of this team. They might not be on the field all the time, but they immediately come in, spark the offense, and keep things rolling as if there's not that big of a change. And you have five incredibly impressive backs as Jackson Williams makes another another couple of nice cuts up the middle to pick up six when he had to put his foot in the ground right around the line of scrimmage. So we might not get to call their names very frequently, but I don't think that should diminish anything regarding their skill level because they come out and they're showing right off the bat that they can play almost as well as anyone on these teams. Jackson Williams, somebody Coach Urban was really excited to get the football. Said he hasn't been able to get touches just because he hasn't gone to the travel roster and obviously that UMHB game very close late. As this is a fake to Johnny Milo. Swings out to B.J. Rainey. Rainey down the sideline, dives for the pylon, but he's going to be knocked out just short. As B.J. Rainey, the elusive wide receiver, takes it inside the five to the three. And Rainey, you see again, just a little bubble screen. Both of these teams doing their best to get the ball out of these quarterbacks' hands quickly and into the hands of these guys that can make home run plays. B.J. Rainey has just incredible elite level start-stop speed that he showed off right there. First and goal for the Tigers. Milo, Milo trying to fight in, but he can't quite get there. The sophomore Johnny Milo stopped at the one, and it'll be second and goal. Milo kind of trying to take a page out of Legend Grigsby's book, what we saw earlier. It looked like he could have outrun some guys to that corner of the end zone, instead trying to go through them and just bulldoze his way into the end zone. Nice job of just gang tackling from the links right there, and they were able to bring him down just short of the goal line. Johnny Milo, another guy they trust in this running back room. He gets it again, and this time he's in. Touchdown Tigers, Johnny Milo, and it's 48 to nothing Trinity. That time, Milo, absolutely no hesitation 
about trying to go through the big boys. Sees just a little bit of a gap, knowing he only needs about a yard to find the end zone. So he just dives straight through it. Seen the sophomores, both of them come on this drive. Williams and Milo combining for the touches in order to put Trinity's seventh touchdown of the afternoon onto the board. And another kicker on that the field. That is Dante that time. McLaughlin, the San Antonio Loco, and local. And that extra point is good, and it's 49 to nothing. As the Tigers trying out. Their kickers getting them some experience. We know Huddle's the guy. He made the 50-yard kick, but getting some of these younger guys involved. We'll see if he will also have his number called for kickoff duties right here. I think I saw him running to that special teams huddle on the sideline. That's what they did with River Rocha, so it looks like McLaughlin's going to have his chance at a kickoff as well as we're learning all sorts of new names. We thought it was just going to be defensive players, running backs, receivers, definitely quarterbacks, but kickers as well, getting to see everybody today. Yeah, not very frequently that you move on to, I guess now a third string kicker. As we mentioned, that first defensive possession of this second half, a lot of familiar names. So I'd anticipate now that the offense is tacked on a couple more points, we'll see a bit more turnover there. Short kick brought past the 20 out to the 30 and a good return for the Lynx. That is Austin Smith returning that one for Rhodes. There is another penalty down on the field. This one right around the 35 yard line where the ball was kicked more than likely offsides on that Trinity special teams unit with the flags in that area. And it looks like that referee is going to mark off five yards. So Rhodes will take over at the 36. As Reader remains in the game at quarterback. Rhodes trying to still compete in this game. Improve on every drive. Reader under immediate pressure, throwing deep incomplete. Just missed his man as he had Barlow. Just overthrown, it'll be second and 10. On the pass pressure for Trinity, number 11, Johnny Lavoto. That was Lavoto. Number 11 for the Tigers, checking into the game. Not sure who it was. I think the left tackle for the Lynx right there. Mark Fields, who tried to throw a little bit of a chop block, take out Moboto's legs, but the junior defensive end doing a nice job getting his hands on top of the tackle, shoulders stay upright, and then he got that pressure on Reeder, who had to get rid of the ball maybe just a bit quick and caused that ball to air mail. Wobadu in on that play as well. As it'll bring up third down and long for Rhodes again. We're seeing more new names come in. As we're under two minutes remaining in this third quarter. Ball spotted at the 37 yard line. That one, number 17, John Cole McAdams checking back into the game, subbing off one of those defensive linemen. Third and nine scenario right here, totally anticipating the pass. That one over the middle dropped in there nicely. Helmet came off at the end, but able to secure the catch. A big play for Rhodes as Andrew Pickens has his first reception of the game. And he'll take it down to about the 25 yard line. So Trinity opting to take a defensive lineman off the field, then bringing one of those Linebackers, maybe that nickel off the edge, unable to get home on Reeder. He had a safety bearing down across the field on Pickens, but just a step late, and that one ultimately falling into his arms. So now Rhodes with a first down. Reeder over the middle. That ball is 
caught. A good job by Austin Smith hanging on through the contact as Rhodes has it inside the 10 at the six. That one, another hit from a safety. Tyson Cornett stepping up. Really impressive, as you mentioned, for Smith to hold on to that one. Cornette, a name that we've gotten used to the last couple of weeks. Started a couple of consecutive games at safety in the absence of Casey Hampton, who returned to the defensive lineup today. Someone that I know Coach Urban is enthralled to have back out there. First and goal, Reeder. Escaping to the end zone, incomplete, nearly intercepted. As Trinity almost took the ball away for the second time today. That was Jaden Powell getting his hands on it. See number one, Smith come across the screen, run a little bit of a wheel route. I think Reeder was forced to just scramble out to his left because of the way that pocket broke down. A little bit interesting to see that wheel route in this area of the field, especially into that near sideline when it shortened as much as it is. Lucky that that tip didn't end up in an interception, but we see him roll out again here. Reader the end zone. Caught, but did he get the feet down? Rhodes celebrates. The officials have yet to make a signal. And it looks like that will be a touchdown. Evan Reader pass. Brent as Brent Barlow into the end zone as Rhodes is on the scoreboard for the first time today. And Barlow, someone that we mentioned earlier on this afternoon, well earlier on, he dropped the ball on the Rhodes' first offensive possession of the day. Does a nice job hanging on to that one, surviving a hit from linebacker TJ Scannell and it's establishing both of his feet in the end zone. A really nice job from Barlow and just a really great response from this offense to finally put some points up on the board. We mentioned it, have to forget about the score line and focus on themselves as they continue to play this one out. Another quarter remaining here in San Antonio. Just have to do everything positive that you can down the stretch of this one. Hope you can carry some of it forward as you continue conference play. That was something Coach Duncan talked to us about in the game two years ago against Trinity. They scored the most points that anybody did on the Tigers all season, but that was because they pulled some starters and they were able to do some good things late, some encouraging things, and hoping for a similar result as we're close to entering the fourth quarter. 11 seconds remaining here in the third quarter as Rhodes is about to send it away to the Tigers. This one taken at the four, bringing it up past the 20, past the 30, brought down at the 36. So a good return for Trinity. Number 81, Cam Heron on the return for Trinity. That's Cam Heron, the freshman from Abilene, getting in the game to return. So it had been Lamont Nickelberry as the Tigers continuing to try new players at new positions. Yeah, and another first year getting his number called on that one. I think he lined up about at his own 15-yard line, so he was backpedaling for a minute there. But when he finally caught that one, planted that foot, and took off moving forward. A nice little return of about 30 yards from where he caught it. I think that's what you want to see if you're Coach Urban and you're these coordinators, Trinity forced to call a timeout on that one as Ethan Boyer ran onto the field a little bit late. Late substitution there as Ethan Boyer running onto the field. They will be Colin Bishop in at quarterback for Trinity now. Ryan Baxday is done and a pretty good one. Led two touchdown drives for the Tigers. Helping add on to that score to make it 49 to 7 now. Still four seconds remaining in the third quarter. Yeah, Bishop first time that we'll get to see him in the backfield at quarterback, sophomore here at Trinity, came in last year after playing the quarterback position in high school, made a pos positional change with a pretty full quarterback room last year, but now trans transitions back into the role. And we'll get to see him maybe show off his arm 
here in the fourth quarter. This will be the last play of the third quarter. Still four seconds remaining. The give up the middle. Spinning away, staying alive. And eventually knocked out of bounds at the 49 yard line. As that's another good run for the Tigers and a good way to end the third. End of three here in San Antonio, 49 to seven. Trinity leads Rhodes on Tiger Network. We'll be back after this. And welcome back to the Alamo City. Sun sh still shining as the kickoff was at 4 p.m. today as opposed to the usual 6 p.m. this early in the year. Give up the middle. And that'll be a gain of two. You mentioned the sun still shining. Originally, probably should have been well under the lights at this point. We talked about it in the open. This one slated for a 6 o'clock start at the onset of the season, but Rhodes unfortunately running into some issues with their travel. Had some flights canceled, so they flew into Dallas, I believe, mm -hmm. and then made the drive from Dallas down to San Antonio as Colin Bishop unable to connect on that ball down the left sideline trying to find Sebastian Trevino, sophomore in for the Tigers. We talked about Coach Duncan really liking this opportunity still earlier on in the year. Just puts your team in a position on the road to spend a lot of time with each other, get familiar. And I think when you have an un a young offense like they do, that's certainly a benefit and a luxury that maybe teams don't always get. So just finding ways to frame it in a positive manner as they've done so this trip is always great to see. That pass caught over the middle, so a third down conversion for the Tigers. They'll move the chains as that's Cam Heron making the reception at the 36. But you talked about the awkward flight arrangements flying into Dallas and they ran in to their former quarterback. Yeah, Coach Duncan said that when they got to their hotel in Dallas, Luke Macias, quarterback of the Rhodes Lynx for the past two years, graduated a season ago, was waiting for them in the lobby. He's at graduate school. I think he's at law school at SMU in the Dallas area. So he made sure to come out, be there for this team when they got there. Coach Duncan had just nothing but great things to say in regards to Luke Macias. Talked extensively about how tough he was as a quarterback and how that's something that all of the guys on this roster, all of the young quarterbacks that he has really need to develop, need to learn how to get hit, how to pop back up and continue to play down after down. I think that's something that we saw here this afternoon, Evan Reeder, Obviously not in the most favorable circumstances. Made a mistake with that pick six that he threw to Caleb Harmel, but responded really, really well. Obviously against some substitutes here from this Trinity defense in the second half, but threw a touchdown pass and overall showed great poise all afternoon. Coach Duncan saying he loves the quote, so what, now what? And in this case, it would be you're down 49 to nothing, so what? Now what? You go down and score, and you try and win the fourth quarter. That's what Rhodes is going to try and do as Trinity has it at the 33-yard line. There's Bishop. 
Gives it up the middle and maybe a gain of one. It's going to bring up fourth down. That was Jackson Williams again on the carry right there. Acting as if he was going to cut that one upfield. And then on the juke move, trying to get back to the outside, was tripped up just a bit. So maybe would have had a first down if he had dove forward originally instead. Tom Bishop and the offense going to remain out there for this fourth and short. Give to Williams up the middle. He's got the first down and plenty more. Gain of about four when he only needed one, and the Tigers convert on fourth. And that time, just getting down downhill with that full head of steam. Right now we see just a totally new offensive line in there for Trinity as well. Continuing to provide a pretty nice push and creating some gaps up front for that sophomore running back to hit hard. Bishop up the middle, plunging down to the 11-yard line, a physical play from the sophomore quarterback as the Tigers will be just shy of the 10-yard line at the 12. What I talked about earlier in the broadcast regarding Ryan Back was the fact that the offense doesn't change a ton when these backups come in. Ryan Back was continuing to get the ball out in rhythm this offense was making it really easy on the substitutes. I think what we're seeing from Bishop right here is a little bit different. Not a whole lot of design quarterback runs that we see drawn up for Tucker Horn or even for Ryan Back when he gets in there. But a couple times already on this drive, we've seen number 15 tuck it and run. And he's not afraid at all to put his helmet and his shoulder down at the end to dive forward, take the contact, and try and pick up a couple of extra yards. So impressed with what I'm seeing out of the sophomore quarterback so far. It'll be second down and six from inside the 10 yard line. Milo is the back for Trinity. They fake it to him over the middle. That's caught. Touchdown Tigers. Jordan Jones reeling it in the end zone and Trinity has hung 50. Number 11 coming in, getting that touchdown grab. Celebration all around for the fifth year. Who stuck around, play his final season in the Maroon jersey. I think that might be his first career touchdown grab. Don't quote me on that one. Kick by Rocha is good. Now 56 to seven. And I can confirm that that is the first career touchdown for Jordan Jones. It was great to see Colin Bishop putting that one right on the money. Jordan Jones with a nice little route right there, creating just enough separation and then showing off his strong hands. To hold on to that one for six. Well, Luke, now seems to be as good of a time as any to carry on a Tiger Network tradition started by Brian Yanselson, who we both learned so much from the mascot story. How did Rhodes become the Lynx? So Rhodes have been the Lynx since 1924. They chose the Lynx because of their agility and strength, but the most interesting part about this story is the full body logo that they chose for the Lynx. So you see on the graphic right now, it's just the head. They have a logo that is like the entire Lynx, and he's standing on the M Bridge. So the M Bridge is a bridge in Memphis, Tennessee, where Rhodes is, that connects Memphis to West Memphis, Arkansas. So it's a symbol for not only Rhodes College and Memphis, but also the connection that Rhodes has with its community. As this one's taken out past the 40, still going down the sideline past the 50 and a good return for Austin Smith to wrap up this mascot story. Yeah, a great return from Smith right there, taking that one on the near side of the field. This one backs him up all the way into the end zone. Trinity maybe out kicking the coverage just a little bit right there. He's east to west for a long time right there, throws a little bit of a head nod to throw Johnny Kusa off and give him the sideline. 
eventually pushed out, as you mentioned. But you talk about the Lynx mascot. You talk about the bridge. Cole, I have driven across the bridge many a times, and what a sight it is. I've made that drive late at night when it's raining. It's lit up. You're coming across into Memphis. You got the Bass Pro Pyramid right on your left, right on the horizon. It's a, it's a sight to, to behold, truly. And it's a great mascot story. It's a hard one to beat, certainly. It's a nod to Brian Yanselson, who expanded my sports knowledge for sure, but more than anyone else in my lifetime, expanded my knowledge of college mascots. For anyone watching Tiger football over the last several years, you know what Brian Yanselson would say? It would not be a Tiger Network broadcast without the mascot story. Always interesting to learn about those little little fun facts about different teams that come into San Antonio. As Rhodes will have the ball in Trinity Territory. Swing pass. And the ball came out at the end. We'll see if that's going to be called a catch. It will be. And loss of two for Rhodes. Yeah, that one going to Cooper. But that time via number eight who checks back into the game, Taylor Haas making his second appearance, came in for a couple of snaps in the first half when Reeder had rolled out to his left and found himself on the sideline. Haas comes into the game. We mentioned it earlier, Houston Wilhelm, still in concussion protocol, unavailable for this one. He had started the previous three games for Rhodes. And here is Haas, gonna throw incomplete as his hand might have gotten hit. That ball came out a little wobbly. And it'll bring up fourth down. Fourth down here. We have a better vantage point from the box of the Trinity sideline on the near side. You can see number 12 warming up. It's Will Vasky, another quarterback who's making his way down to where he anticipates the Trinity offense will take the field. So we might have the opportunity to see yet another quarterback here for the Tigers this afternoon. As this punt is away, it'll bounce to about the 15-yard line, a good Rhodes bounce. And that is where Will Vasky and this offense will take over. As you see, some of the conference play in the Southern Athletic Association. These games are all final, and you see the Barry Vikings at the top of your screen defeating center 49 to 16. And that is who Trinity will have next in a game that will likely decide the conference out in Georgia. Yeah. As of right now, slated to be one of the best games of next week. Barry, the top team receiving votes, but not quite into the top 25. After that result over a center team that was picked to be in the top half of the SAA this year, they could very easily crack that top 25 and make it a huge, huge road matchup for these Tigers. Good run there for Jackson Williams, who's been getting really involved in this second half. But you mentioned how critical of a game that's going to be. Barry came in here to San Antonio, made it a very interesting ball game. The highlight of that game for the Barry Vikings, probably a blocked field goal that they ran all the way back for a touchdown. Trinity ended up winning that game 21 to 14, helping them to another SAA championship. Yeah, and a little bit of a low scoring game, but in part due to that issue that Coach Urban talked about, and what we've touched on this afternoon. The fact that last year the offense didn't get going as quickly as he would have liked to have seen it more often than not. That was a game you only put up 21 points. Obviously, Barry helped out by their defense and special teams getting a touchdown on the board. But they're going to really need a great start on the road and a little bit of a hostile environment against a team and a school that really knows what it means to show up, to show out, and to dominate a conference. They did so for a number of years before Trinity won the SAA for the first time outright in 2021, a couple of years ago. Coach Rich Duncan knows all about the success of Barry. He was their offensive coordinator in that span while Barry won five consecutive SAA championships, and they 
were really the class of this conference until the Trinity Tigers showed up. Back-to-back -back undefeated seasons before this year. They lost to St. John's in week one, but in a position now to go 3-1 and one and 2-0 and oh in SAA play and set up that powerhouse matchup with Barry. And you mentioned the fact that Coach Duncan was at Barry. His departure coincided with the fact that that streak ended. When he took the job at Rhodes, his first year was in 2021 as Vasky airs that one out over the middle and hits another big tight end for the Tigers who keeps rumbling down, staying on his feet and just refusing to go down even with four or five Rhodes links jumping on his back. That was number 26 for Trinity right there. Baron Calden, that time the freshman out of Jonestown, Texas, making his presence felt, just refusing to go down on that play. We continue to talk about that Barry matchup, though. 2021, their first season without Coach Duncan being the first year that Trinity outright won the SAA, stripping Barry of a place atop the standings for the first time in five years, but now they're returning to form, kind of figuring things out without their offensive coordinator of the past. We talked to him about building this Rhodes program up. It might not look like it today, but Rhodes on the upswing from the past few seasons. They ended the year last year beating Birmingham Southern, who Tiger fans will know gave the Tigers a heck of a time here in San Antonio, needing a 45-yard touchdown to Carter Self with less than a minute remaining to win that game. Came into this game 2-1, and one, losing to center in triple overtime. As here's Vasky. And that pass knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Incomplete third down coming up. Yeah, and already the second time on this drive that we've seen Vasky have a couple of balls batted at the line of scrimmage. But he's standing in the pocket right now. Not the runner that we saw out of Colin Bishop a couple of times on the last offensive possession. He's really showing his arm off. He's zipping the ball around a couple of times already on this drive. See what he can do on this third and medium. About seven yards to gain. Third down and seven from the 10-yard line. They will give it up the middle and in for the touchdown. Jackson Williams and Trinity up to 60 on the scoreboard with under five minutes remaining. Jackson Williams really fired up on that one. Not sure if he's cracked the end zone in his collegiate career so far. We'll pull it up here in the box. Talked about him already here this afternoon. A guy that Coach Urban has been incredibly impressed by, but hasn't had his number called all that frequently just because of the restrictions the travel roster puts on you. Can't afford to take five running backs with you, even if all those guys are deserving. And I think Jackson Williams has proved afternoon that he is more than deserving as you see that hole open up on the left side of the offensive line is that a gap just to the left of the center that is the first career touchdown for jackson williams you saw the emotion in that replay getting into the end zone for the first time in his collegiate career we mentioned it throughout the broadcast that's a guy they really like and you see why as he's able to strut his stuff into the end zone had the stats up there for a second and just an incredibly impressive spread between the two teams. Now over 500 yards on the afternoon for this Trinity offense and the defense doing their job. Not in a flashy capacity. I'm not sure they even got home for one sack this afternoon. But holding this Lynx offense to under 200 total yards on the day and coming away with a touchdown. As that'll be fair caught. So Rhodes will get the football back with 4.45 remaining. As Taylor Haas and the offense will come back out now down 63 to seven. And I'm trying to find the last time 
Trinity put up 60 points on the board. I'm struggling to think of one. I can't think of one off the top of my head either, Cole. It might have been back in the 2021 season, maybe even before that. I don't think it's something that they did last year, but it felt like it was something that they were often capable of achieving. They just got in their own way a lot, and I think that's what's been most impressive from them so far this year. Again, we used the terminology, the phrase, earlier this afternoon, just clicking on all cylinders. This has been an outright dominant performance where just everything has seemed to go right from them. Maybe a little bit of a hiccup with the fact that Rhodes has seven points on the board, but when you hang 63 yourself, you have the opportunity to get some, some second, third string guys in there. They get scored on, they get scored on. I think Coach Urban loves to reward those guys. He talked about them in our meeting this week. In fact, they work their butts off in practice day in and day out to give the first string guys just great looks and arguably make the games easier than what they see in practice. We do have that number. The last time the Tigers put up 60 points on the board was a 64 nothing final in 2021 against McAllister. And now they've done it again today, 63 to seven they lead. Not the shutout like it was against McAllister in 2021, but still an overall dominant performance approaching four minutes remaining in this one. Yeah, and it's guys continuing to come in, get their first reps of the season, get their first reps of their career in some circumstances. And even in those scenarios, when they're just getting their feet wet, they continue to dominate. There's another stalemate at the line of scrimmage right there. The Link's not able to pick up any yardage, find themselves in another third down scenario. It'll be third down and six for Taylor Haas and company. As we wind down to 3.30 remaining in the fourth. As a throw to the sideline, that'll be caught. And that should be enough for the Rhodes first down inside the 45. Nice strong throw from Haas right here. Trinity bringing four again, number 58 coming off the edge and getting in Haas's face quickly was Foster Malloy. Haas able to sneak that ball through his hands Connect with his wide receiver on the outside. That was Jacob Castle who had enough for the first down. Kept the chains moving. Going deep incomplete. And normally it's, it's pretty uncommon to call player of the game before the game ends. But I think it's a fair case in this one. Ryan Merrifield. Probably the man of the day. Six catches, 151 yards, four touchdowns, and did not play a snap in the second half. I think it's safe to say that he's the player of the game today. I'd have to agree with you there, Cole. He had a phenomenal, phenomenal start to the season. First couple of drives of the afternoon in that week one opener at St. John's. He was Tucker Horn's favorite target. And then he missed a couple of series, came back in, didn't get the ball in his hands nearly as much. He had an impact on the game against Mary Harden Baylor, but not in the way that he impacted the game at Birmingham Southern, and certainly not the way that he impacted the game here this afternoon. Six catches, have four of them be touchdowns. Absolutely ludicrous stuff, but really setting himself back on track to have just an outstanding fifth-year campaign. Haas will run that one inside the 40. There is a flag at about the 44, and we'll see who that's going to be on, but everything elementary at this point. The other aspect of Ryan Merrifield exploding for a couple of consecutive weeks is that he could potentially be the first Trinity receiver to go for 1,000 yards in a season in over 20 years. It hasn't happened since that period of time when Coach Urban was a player and the receiving core was arguably the strongest that it's ever been, but they're kind of bringing it back up to that old standard with 
Merrifield, with Cole Manego, with Will Taylor and the rest of the group that's out there. Tigers have been to two national semifinals in 1998-1999, went to the national championship in 2002 as well, and that was around the time Coach Urban was playing, so it's been that long since the Tigers have had a 1,000-yard receiver bringing the program back to its old glory. As that pass is caught by Castle, fighting to about the 30-yard line, and that's where he'll be marked out. A long way to go for the Tigers to get to the national championship, obviously. Don't want to look ahead, but it's all going to, it's all going to come down to that Barry game in terms of the conference, which is what you're going to need to win first. Absolutely. But the thing that's interesting about Division Three football is that Every week has playoff implications. I think even the preseason this year had playoff implications. The ultimate story is you take care of business in conference play, you get the automatic bid. And that's what Trinity's doing right now. Obviously a great start by beating PSC and on their way to a victory here this afternoon against Rhodes. That's caught by Austin Smith, breaking a tackle. And in, no, are they going to mark him out? It looks like they're going to mark him down at the three-yard line. Waltz into the end zone, but stepped out of bounds with a minute 13 remaining. Nice job from Haas on this drive. Just, again, something we saw out of him and Reeder both this afternoon, just their willingness to stand in the pocket, deliver some strikes. That one, a nice one over the middle of the field, which we didn't necessarily see earlier in the game. I'm not sure if Smith actually did step out of bounds on that one, but nonetheless puts the Lynx in great position to try and end this game on a high note and find their way into the end zone. We talk about Barry beating center 49-16. to 16. Rhodes went to overtime against center last week, lost in triple overtime 28-26. to 26. So overall, pretty good measuring point as to where these teams are. As it's fair to say that Center and Rhodes probably pretty even after the overtime game they played. Haas lobs it for the end zone, incomplete. That's knocked away with 33 seconds remaining. Yeah, talk about comparative scores a little bit. Just always so difficult to judge those kind of games, especially with what we've seen here this afternoon. This Trinity side's been able to get a ton of backups and reserves onto the field. Even they've had success today. I think we're going to see a really, really great game between two teams that have a lot on the line next week. You can lose one game in your conference schedule and miss out on the playoffs, and I think both teams are certainly be cognizant of that a week from today. That pass is caught for the touchdown. Brent Barlow, his second score of the game as Rhodes is able to punch it in with 28 seconds remaining to make it 63 to 13. I see Haas just standing in there in the pocket, just coming over the top of that linebacker. It was number 51 in there for the Tigers. Ferris Raffae, the first year out of Sugarland, Texas. Probably in the best position to defend that ball, but Rhodes finding a nice little pocket in the zone behind him right before that end line. Got their receiver camped out in the perfect spot, and Haas weighted that pass perfectly for a second touchdown of the afternoon with just under 30 ticks left on the clock. 28 seconds remaining in this one. As Rhodes able to cut it to 63-14. We'll do one final kickoff, you would think, and then Vasky can take a knee and end this one. As this one's going to be a pretty short kick. Brought past the 20, past the 30, and down at the 33. So not quite the opponent 
that Barry is going to be. Very different situations. How do you think the Tigers build from this and take it into next week? I think it always feels good to head into a game having really sharpened your weapons up. And I think that's exactly what they did this afternoon. They did it two consecutive weeks. Ryan Merrifield got hot last week. He continued it into this game. I think he's probably going to be one of the guys that has his number called the most frequently next week as well. I think Barry's going to be more than cognizant of that, though. So I think this is a Trinity offense that's going to have to be clicking on all cylinders again. <laughs> so we see some of those fresh faces eager to get into the action right there. A hard count from, I think, Colin Bishop, who's back out there with 21 seconds on the clock, gets a couple of those guys to jump. But I think Coach Urban's going to be happy with what he saw here today in regards to the way that this team controlled the football game. And I think he's going to want to see similar things next week at Barry. They will give it to Jackson Williams, a good carry for number six. And that should be the final play of the game as the teams will begin to line up and shake hands. This clock goes to zero, and the Tiger fans love what they see. 63 to 14 is your final score. Trinity, 2-0 in conference play, 3-1 overall. As they get ready to head to Mount Berry, Georgia next week to face the Vikings. Luke, what are your overall takeaways from today? Well, you mentioned their record, 3-1, and, and you think back to week one when they went on the road and they lost to St. John's. And they came home, they beat Mary Harden Baylor, and what was a playoff-like atmosphere. And since week one, they've just gotten better and better. I think that outside of the first drive of the first half this afternoon, they just clicked on all cylinders. All right, Mary Harden Baylor stood in their way a little bit. That was understandable. They went on the road to Birmingham Southern, who's been a great, great opponent in the conference a couple of years in a row. It wasn't a game where they put up a ton of points in the first half, but they finished strong. Today, obviously didn't get on the board to start the afternoon, but played a fantastic four quarters of football nonetheless. I think if they continue to trend in this direction and play complete games like this, they have that number six ranking in the country for a reason. When teams at this caliber play complete games, they're incredibly, incredibly hard to beat. And I think that's what this team is showing right now, is that if they play the way that they're capable of, they control the game that they want to, they do the little things like take care of the ball, control field position, control time of possession, they're just one of the most difficult teams in the country to upset. Quick note on the ranking of number six, that one of the teams ahead of them, Harden Simmons, a familiar foe, who they played in the first round falling at Endicott in Massachusetts. So why does that matter? If they were to meet in the postseason, that would help the case for that game to be here and hosting a first round playoff game. Trinity will line up and do the alma mater as they do after every victory. We'll let you soak it in. Crawford holding the Trinity Texas flag as the Tigers carry on that tradition after each victory. As we mentioned, Trinity will head to Mount Berry, Georgia to face the Berry Vikings in a game that could very well decide the conference. Rhodes will head back home and host Southwestern back in Memphis, Tennessee. Well, that's it for us on Tiger Network. 
I'm Cole Isaacson alongside Luke Terry. Thank you to everybody in the control room as we say so long from San Antonio, Texas.